Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Webinar Update uh, with myself, Dev Madden. Today's date is Monday the 9th of April 2018. The time has just gone 12.15 BST, British Summer Time, quarter past 12 UK PM UK time. As always with, with our webinars, I will leave the risk warnings on screen for you to have a read through. It's all fairly straightforward and it's, and it's all, all fairly simple. Uh, it, this will make my compliance department very happy. Uh, it essentially states anything that is covered in this webinar uh, it are my own personal views and opinions and comments, and they're not to be taken as explicit trading or investment advice. They're, they're, just, they're just comments and observations that I am making. Uh, but while you're having read through those those screens, those, those slides, uh, which are on your screen at the moment, I will just quickly talk about what's going on in the financial market this morning. So we've seen a bit of a bounce back in uh, in, in global equities. Nothing major, but traders are, for the time being, at least cautious, cautiously optimistic. Uh, it would seem over the weekend that President Trump is a bit optimistic himself that China will reach a deal. Uh, it doesn't appear that Mr. Trump has taken the hard line. and It appears that he previously had, he took the hard line and now he's taken, taken the more softer stance. He believes that this isn't going to end in a full-blown trade war. He believes that China and the Beijing government will will, uh, will will strike a deal in relation to the the kind of the trading imbalance between the United States and China. Of course, we had figures out last week showing that America's trade deficit was at a nine and a half year high, and lo and behold, the two regions which had a, the highest trading deficit was number one, China, and number two, the EU. So you can kind of see where President Trump is coming from. But Mr. Trump does have a, a, have a history of kind of acting uh, in a quite an aggressive manner as a way of actually cajoling, to get, to, get the, to get the argument going, as well, to get the conversation started, and then it kind of often becomes a bit, bit more reasonable as time goes on. He does like to, have, he to give the impression he is a bit unstable and, and erratic and, and volatile, and we're seeing that in the financial markets. Uh, but for the time being, uh, we are seeing a bit more confidence coming back into global equities. We had a major sell-off in U.S. stocks. Uh, on towards you know in the kind of in the end of the session on Friday, and we have seen a bit of a bounce back. Uh, we're recording the Dow of a few hundred points and the S and P of about 20 odd points. Things are looking fairly positive for the uh, for the uh, start. Um, that's basically the, the, the kind of major. Uh, that's essentially the the major uh, kind of news over the last 24 hours, 48 hours. If we go here, take a look on the news and analysis section of our website, uh, which can be, which can be found here on our website. Scroll over here. We can take a quick look at what's the week ahead. Every Friday, this 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 will get posted up. Um, at the end of the week, we get posted up, talking about what are the what are the what are the uh, very different um, economic indicators and also corporate stories to keep an eye out for the week ahead. It's a good. It's, it's always posted at the at the end of the trading week. That's worth having a quick read through. So we, we can see here the next couple of sessions today and Tuesday aren't really busy, but Wednesday is probably the busiest day of the week. We have Chinese CPI and PPI coming out. If, uh, this, this, is, this is obviously going to be a good uh, health barometer of how the Chinese economy is doing. CPI is, um, is, 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 has been rising recently, but PPI at, at the factory level has been has been dwindling. So it could suggest there's actually a bit of a demand. Uh, there's been a slight demand at the factory level, which could lead down the line to a softer, PP, to a softer CPI. If you're trading high-grade copper or any of the commodities or, commod or mining companies of the Australian dollar, Keep an eye on that. Wednesday morning, we have full year figures out from Tesco. That's not only going to impact Tesco. You also probably see the rest of the British supermarket sector also in play. Your M&Ss, your Sainsburys, uh, and the likes. Wednesday morning, we also have UK manufacturing production, industrial production, and construction output. And keep in mind, the manufacturing sector in the UK is growing at a slower pace, and the service sector in the UK is growing at a much slower pace than expected. And also the construction PMI report last week from the UK actually swung to contraction territory. So there's a lot of talk that the Bank of England might raise interest rates next month. And let, and so far, the, some of the economic indicators recently haven't been too hot. So that, that's been called into question. So let's see how the figures come in on Wednesday. On Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, we have the Federal Reserve minutes uh, from, the, from, from the March meeting when interest rates were hiked by 0.25% meeting expectations. Uh, the, the Fed minutes will give us a, will give us a more in-depth view of what the Federal Reserve are actually thinking. Uh, recently, we, we've heard that the Federal Reserve are following the economic indicators rather than the kind of political talk that's coming out of Washington, D.C. at the moment. Bearing in mind, these minutes were taken before the most recent non-farm payroll figures 
where we saw just over, over 100,000 jobs added in March, well below the expect, well below the expectation. But keep in mind, um, the previous month's number was revised slightly higher to over 300 to 326,000. So when you when you amalgamate and average March's numbers and February's numbers, it looks fairly still looks fairly positive. In the most recent report, unemployment ticked up by 4.1 percent. It's not great, but it's not the end of the, end of the world. And also, average earnings continue to rise. They ticked up 2.7 percent, meet the expectations. So the most recent non farm payrolls report, on its own, wasn't great. But when you average it out with the February report, it seems to be okay. It's probably those two months combined and averaged. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. Those two months combined and averaged should be in, in a position. Should be. Uh, in a position to actually um, average out the actual those two months combined and average should actually be in line with the previous say, six months or so or average or so. Um, I apologize, John, uh, in relation to unable to see this see to the screen. What you should see now in front of you is actually is is a picture of our uh, trading 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 website. I hope that the, the problem resumed, but I but I can but I am other people who've signed into the webinar appear to be in a position where they're actually also seeing the the um, see the screen as well um, in relation to Friday's Friday we have the quarterly numbers first quarter numbers from Wells Fargo JP Morgan and and, and Citigroup it's also worth pointing out which I, which I referenced later on an entire video for this screen is a uh, video for this webinar is going to be posted on our website to be posted on our inside section of our website later on I also will be tweeting it out uh, in relation to um, what's going on, so, so there are the major highlights of things we, we, we need to keep an eye out for in, in the rest of um, of the rest of the trading week. Um, in the rest of the trading week, um, take a look now at what's going on in terms of the some of the, the major markets. So I'll, I'll take a look now at what's going on in the FTSE 100. So taking a look here at the FTSE 100, uh, in, in the last few, in the last week or so, our, our last 10 days, it's come off the March lows. It's been pushing higher quite, quite, quite aggressively in, in um, over, over the past number of sessions. We can see here, looking at the MACD indicator, MACD histogram, there's been a steady rise in positive momentum. So as the market's pushing higher, that's been confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum. So, we, 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 so the, the, the MACD indicator is confirming the, the upward move. We're just about trading in around the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around the 7,200 mark. It, it's previously acted resistance, as resistance on a couple of occasions, and a, a couple of occasions, we would need to kind of take out that level to actually kind of be, be more confident the market in, in is, is regaining ground. Beyond that, keep an eye out for the mid-March high of 7,256, this level here. And if you go north of that, keep an eye out for the late February high of 7,340. And then if you take out that area, then uh, then keep an eye on the 7,400 price because not only is it a big psychological number, it's also co coincides with the 200-day moving average. And if you go north of that, uh, if the market's beyond above this 200-day moving average, it's broadly seen uh, as a uh, sort of positive. And if you do get that high, we would have retraced a lot of the ground lost at the beginning of the year. But if the market can't fail, to, can't get over it, the Get, get past 7,200, uh, and, and if it fails to do that and turn over again, we could look at find the support in around the 7,100 area, a bit of consolidation there. 7,000 itself is a big psychological number, and if you go south of 7,000, the big area to keep an eye out for would be the March low of 6,839, and of course if you take out that low, that will be then a new low for 2018, and we could be looking heading back down towards 6,800. Well, what I'm going to do, as with all my uh, Monday market webinars, I'll run through the major uh, indices, a few, a few commodities, and a few currency pairs, all the, the very popular ones. But if there are any markets that you haven't, that I haven't covered, and you want me to cover, uh, please feel free to to type in the chat box, and I'll do it. So as you can see here, the DAX uh, hasn't been is in, in, in as strong as a shape as the FTSE 100. Notice how. This area, uh, if around 11,692, 11,700 is acting as, as act a decent support, this region here. But we have seen a fairly consistent series of lower highs. So I'm not overly, you know, we really would need to be taking out some of the previous highs before we become more confident 
as the market is uh, is correcting itself. So the market has been pushing higher here for the last week or 10 days. That's been confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum. So the momentum is with the buyers and the market is pushing higher. If you get north of the 2 day moving average, which comes into play at 12,370, if you go north of there, keep an eye out for the, the mid-March high, the high, of, the high of March, which comes into play at, at um, 12,000, uh, 12,475. And if you go beyond that, look towards the, the, the high in February, the, high, the late February high of 12,600. And then if you go north of that, you could be looking at heading up towards the 2 day moving average, which comes into play at 12,668 and then if you go beyond that then we can become more confident that the market is actually more that the market is going to push on higher from there but if you fail to actually push higher from these areas here of say 12,370 we could be looking at finding some support back in around the kind of 12,000 area big psychological number and if you go south of there possibly down towards 12, 11,800 and then if you break this area this would be a Potentially quite a crucial area for the DAX, just under 11,700, 11,692. As it acted as a bit of as support on a couple of occasions in recent months. If you go north south of this, that's that's when the markets could be looking at actually properly turning over on itself yet again, and back down towards some rain around the the lows of February in or the lows of January in around 11,400, 11,500 back towards here. I take a look now at what's going on in the American markets. So the American market, like I said, had a fairly decent sell-off on Friday. This is this red candle here. Um, in relation to the American markets, uh, I'm not overly optimistic, but as you can see here, there's been a large sell-off and it's been a steady series of lower highs over the past say seven or eight weeks it's very consistently lower highs here but that being said we're still holding north of the two day moving average on the dow jones and i think that the kind of overriding issue is that while we remain north of the two day moving average the outlook is going to remain a, a touch more on the optimistic side than on the pessimistic side that being said if, the, if, that, if that metric is breached um the, the, the overall sentiment would, would change fairly sharply but as you can see here, the market is kind of struggling to, to push higher. So pushing higher from here, an area to keep an eye out for will be the 100-day moving average. This area here is actually kind of is converging with the 50-day moving average. Uh, the, the area for the 100-day moving average comes into play in a 24,000, uh, let's call it say 24,800. Notice how the 100-day moving average acted as both kind of support and resistance. There's a bit of consolidation in around that price metric uh, in, in the middle of last month. If you go north of the 100-day moving average, Next area to keep an eye out for will be the March high at 25,507. And if we go beyond that, keep an eye out then for the late February high of 25,821. Like I said, if you go south of the two day moving average, which comes into play at 23,554, then turn your attention to these price area here in, from, from, uh, from early April, which comes into play in around the 23,400 area in around here. And if you go south of that, you'll be looking then towards the February lows of 23,138. And if you go, and if you break below that, then we'll be creating new lows for 2018. And we, and we could see a fairly decent sell off. It could be heading back down towards this price area here of around 22,430 ish. I'll take a look now at the SP. It's a fairly similar looking chart whereby we've seen lower highs in the past five or six weeks. But we've also seen the market hold above the 2 day moving average. So like I said, we're not looking at the S&P 500. But as you can see, it's a fairly similar looking chart to the S to the Dow Jones. Lower highs over the past number of weeks. It's failed to kind of really kind of shake off and fully correct the uh, the January, February sell-off. But we're still managing to hold above the 2 day moving average. And if we can hold north of the 2 day moving average, we could be looking heading back up towards the testing the recent highs which come into play uh, uh, only from like last Thursday at 2,672. If we go north of that, we could be looking heading towards the 100-day moving average, which is also converging with the 50-day moving average uh, at just, south, just south of 2,700. 
I want to get notice how on a couple of occasions we see some we saw some consolidation uh, price action in around the trend moving average or the quality moving average rather. It didn't quite act as support there, but it got it got fairly close to it. And a couple of occasions here as well that the, we saw the market trade south of it a couple of occasions, but it, while it was pushing higher, but didn't actually manage on those occasions to actually um, finish below it. So the 2,700 area would be, would be a price action to keep an eye for. If you go north of that, we could be looking ahead in this price here in around the 2,760. If you go north of that, keep an eye for the mid-March high of 2,800. Once again, if you break south of the two day moving average, that would be that would be quite a that, that would be fairly that would be reasonably bullish. Sorry, reasonably bearish, reasonably bearish. If you go south of the two day moving average, we could be looking at heading back to the April lows, which come into play in around the 2,553 mark, and then south of that, and potentially back down towards the February lows, 2,532. And if you go south of that, that would be creating a new low for 2018, and it could take us back to 2,500. Take a look now at what's going on in the gold market. Like I said, I've, I've covered the major indices just there. I'll be taking a look at some commodities. Gold, the two all contracts. I'll take a look, I'll take a look at the big four currency pairs. But are there any markets that, uh, I won't, that I haven't covered yet or I, I won't be covering as I've just marked out, feel free to just type in the chat box saying um, that I can uh, that ask me to have a look at them. So what we can see here uh, in the gold price, broadly speaking, over the, so over, the, over the kind of big picture for the last few months, the, the, the gold market has been broadly been pushing higher. Uh, but recently, it's a bit more on the kind of range bound area, and and, and recently with, with the price of gold, it's been broadly kind of edging lower. Um, gold has done fairly well in that it didn't even get it's, it's kind of range bound in say the higher end of the range would be around thirteen fifty five, the lower end of the range would be about thirteen. 1305. Uh, for the time being, gold is, uh, is, is, is hanging above its 50-day move, 50 move, 50 moving average, which comes into play around uh, 1330. If you can hold north of that, we, 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 there's a possibility we could look to kind of re retest the uh, last last week's high of 1348. And if we go north of that, we'd be looking towards the kind of late March high, which comes into play at, at um, 1356. I notice how 1356 and then the, the February high, which comes into play at 1361, and then north of that we'll be looking towards the, the 2018 high of 1366. But gold has been sort of range bound. You know, you need to have a sizable break north of 1350 to kind of really get to kind of really kind of suggest out of this out of this range is sort of 1355 to kind of 1305 is going to be the range. If it breaks south of 1320, we could be looking at back, heading back towards. The late March lows of around 1306, 1305. If you go south of that, the big psychological number 1300 will then be on the cards. And then south of that, not too far below that, comes into play the trade moving average at 12.94. So the big picture over the last say nine months for the oil market. Uh, that's not, not, not too dissimilar chart from Brent, which we're looking at here to WTI, has been still in its upward trend, uh, which, is, which it has been for the past nine months. But recently, it's been coming off the coming off the boil a, a small bit. So you can see here, for, even if you take a, take a look at over since since February, basically after, after that sizable correction, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So still within this upper trend here fits in nicely with the upper upper trend since June 2016. So. What we're seeing is we're seeing a bit of a decline in the price of oil. It's clearly struggled to get north of, say, the kind of 70, 70 test the kind of 71 region here on Brent. It's grinding a bit lower here. As you can see here, there's been a steady decline in positive momentum, swing now to negative momentum. So if we do see the market push lower, we potentially see the negative momentum increase for a bit. But bearing in mind, if, if there's an upward trend since February, which fits in with a wider upper trend, Moves to the downside in the oil market could attract new buyers, and this could be just a pause before the next potential move higher for the oil market. So, we could find some support coming to play at the 50 day moving average, this blue line here at 66.90. And, and also, notice how the 50 the 100 day moving average acts as support and resistance on a couple of occasions in the middle of last month. That comes to play not too far away from the 50 day moving average. 
that comes into play at 67 spot 55. These are areas we could potentially see fresh buyers enter the fold because they have acted as support and resistance in the past. Also, traders are looking at the screen and, and, and realizing that it's, it's the, the trend of the last couple of months has been to the upside combined to a bit of nice with the wider upward trend. And of course, if you go, if you do push north of here, 71 will be the area will be the first uh, kind of port recall to the upside. And if you go beyond that, keep an eye out for 72, 74. A 72, 74 is a level that, that wasn't seen since uh, November 2014. And obviously, if you, if you go north of that, we would we'd then be creating fresh multi-month, multi-year highs. And that, would, and that would be quite a bullish indicator. Take a look at WTR. Like I said, it's a fairly similar chart. Both markets have been in, the, up in, in upward trend since November last year. Uh, sorry, since Jan June last year and not in nine months. A, nine, a solid tr uh, trend for, uh, for the past nine months. And then if you took a, take a look at the smaller notice, you can see here that WTI has been pushing higher here over the last number of months. Granted, the sell-off in WTI is a bit more excessive than the, than the sell-off in Brent. So we, we, we've managed to kind of push below the 50-day moving average. We, we may yet get some support from the 100-day moving average. Notice how the markets, when they sold off in February and they sold off in March, they didn't quite get as low as the one-day moving average, so we could we could potentially see some fresh buyers enter the fold at the one-day moving average, which comes into play at 61.30. Uh, if it and if it if the market does continue the kind of wider upward trend that has been, it, we could be looking heading back and forth the 65 region up towards potentially kind of testing the 67 area. And if you go north of 67, we traders we keep an eye out for that would create multi year highs and we'd be looking towards 68 69 uh, and 70 so on and so forth but if the market does happen to continue the setup that has been recently if you if you do have a if you do have a, a close a daily close below the one or day moving average we could be looking heading back down towards the uh, the march lows which come into play here just north of 60 dollars a barrel and if we go south of that we could be looking heading back towards the february lows of 58 spot 10. What I'm going to do now is I'll do a few currency pairs. Uh, are there any markets you would like me to, any any currencies or other markets, commodities or indices that I haven't touched on that you want, you want me to have a, have, a, have a look at? Feel free to do so. I'll just remove this. The lows here from 22.15. Yes, yeah, so feel free to do type in the chat box. If there are any markets you'd like me to have it, take a quick look at. So the kind of wider trend over the last number, of, last for quite some time, has been quite bullish for the euro versus the US dollar. As you can see, it's been a fairly decent upward trend for quite some time, higher highs and higher lows. Recently though, it's been a bit range bound, it's been a bit uninteresting. It really hasn't had the power to get up towards 125, but it's still firmly held north of the uh, of the March lows of 121.54. But seeing as we are south of the, of the 50 moving average, that could suggest we are, there's a, there's a bit of pressure on the euro and we could be heading south again. So why would we remain south of the 50 moving average, this level here, which comes in play at 123.35? Uh, we could be looking to, looking uh, 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 looking at uh, move to the downside, and if we do move to the downside in the near term, we could find some support in at one spot twenty two fifteen uh, last week's low. And if we go south of that, we could be looking heading back to the April low of one spot twenty five fifty four. And notice how that area coincides with the water day moving average as well. So that's something worth worth noting. And then if you go south from there, we could be looking heading back towards the uh, the the, the an early January high of 120 spot 92 but like I said the wider trend for this market has you know over the last over the last uh, several several months has been very much to the upside so it's, it's more than likely that the wider upward trend will continue so we do manage to re retake the 50 day moving average in at 123 spot 121 spot 2335 next price to keep an eye out for would be the late March high of one spot 2476 and then we're looking at potentially going north of 125. And bearing in mind, we haven't seen these sorts of levels north of 125, um, high 125s 
since uh, 2014. So it, we, we will be talking four-year highs. It should be going north of, say, 125, 60-ish. And then, of course, hitting four-year highs would, of course, be a, a three-and-a-half-year highs would, of course, be quite bullish in itself. So, like I said, if there are any markets you want to have a look at, feel free to shout out. The big picture for the pound versus the US dollar is as follows. If you draw a trend line between the lows of March last year, the lows of August last year, and bring it right through, okay, on a few occasions, it did manage to trade south of that particular trend line, but that trend line has held up uh, for, for the past 12 months. So, anything north of this trend line um, is, is, uh, would, would suggest the outlook for the pound versus the US dollar is, is positive. You can even see recently, uh, over the past say five or six weeks, the move has, has been quite positive. In fact, the the, water, the 50 day moving average, this blue line here, acts as fairly decent support. That comes into play just south of the 140 number. So it kind of works out that big psychological number, 140, and also coincides with the moving average. So the, the, the more indicators, the more kind of uh, support areas that, that kind of combine together, uh, the more importance it holds. So the market's pushing higher here. The next area to keep an eye out for to the upside would be the late March high of 1 spot 42.44 and if you go beyond that up towards 143 and then 144 and then these are areas, if you go up towards 144, we wouldn't have seen that since June 2016. These are levels not seen um, since the EU, since the UK's EU referendum. Notice how this, this is the, uh, this is the, the candle when the, when the, um, on the, in relation to the, the, the Brexit sell-off. If you do happen to move south of 124, I don't think it's necessarily the end of the world for the pound versus US dollar. We could find some support in around the 139 area. We found it's been an area for a lot of consolidation. And quite frankly, as long as we remain north of this, of this trend line, I think the, I think we could see a wider push, a wider push higher for the pound versus the US dollar to continue. So we're looking heading back down towards here. The support from the trend line will come into play in around the kind of one kind of 137.60 area. It's only if you go south of there, could we be looking at heading back down towards the, uh, in around the kind of 135 area. What I'm going to do now, just uh, got a question here. What are the color groups for? Are you talking about the um, the, the lines of the chart, Chris? I don't fully understand the question. Are you, refer are you referring to the moving averages that are in different colors, like you know the 50-day moving average is in blue, and the 100-day moving average is in yellow, and the 200-day moving average is, is in red? Is that what you're referring to? If you just want to kind of add on a bit more to that question, I'll, I'll happily answer it. So now we'll take a look at Euro Sterling. On the interface, what what is are you talking about the trading platform? I'm afraid. Okay, so are you referring to these? I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but I think I know what you mean. Are you referring to say this blue line here and this yellow line here and this red line coming up here? Is that what you're referring to? Would you please just um, if when you say where are the X is, do you mean this X here? Are you referring to this X here? This X? In the top right, is this the X you're referring to? If you could just answer the question again, that'd be fantastic.
color groups. You talk about these color groups along here, this one here. In relation to those little boxes, I mean, when the numbers are flickering here. Are you referring to where the numbers are here? 1 spot 41, 11, 27, 19, 1 spot 41, 40, 11, 43. Is that what you're referring to? I'm afraid I could you be clear please I, could, I I still don't get what you're talking about Anything else you can add Okay, when you, when you say the interface, what exactly do you mean the, the interface? You mean this? When, when, the, when the markets flicker, flicker colors? This button here, the buy button. Stop loss, take profit, estimate a profit. Where are you seeing four little boxes? Okay, Chris, is it possible for me to, um, if, you, if you wouldn't mind typing in your email address, I can actually probably contact you afterwards because I, I, because I think this is this is kind of, I'm still a bit unsure of what you're talking to. And if I, what, I, what I could do is happily finish, up the, happily finish up the webinar and if you put in your contact details, uh, if you ping your contact details onto me, I'll happily um, get in contact with you, um, if that's okay with you. Or if you're on Twitter, feel free to contact me on Twitter as well. dmadden underscore at CMC Markets. Um, like I, I was on the Euro dollar, so Euro sterling is what, what it's coming up to. So in relation to Euro sterling, uh, sorry, Euro, Euro sterling has been reasonably range bound the last number of months, but, but it could potentially be looking for heading a bit of a breakout possibly it's been fairly range bound between say about 90 to the top end and, and uh, 87 to the low end so about 300 pip range in the last number of months but as we can see here it's been probably probably on the last year five the last year month or so or three weeks you can see it's been a fairly obvious move to the downside the low here uh, last month took off the lows of the previous few months which was going to bam that should be a, a signal to you that the market's turning south the market pushes higher here, doesn't quite get north of the 88, runs out of runs out of steam there, and is turning lower yet again. So it would suggest to me that the market could be looking at retesting the recent low of 0 spot 86.67, and if we break and if we go south of that, we then be creating um we then be creating a multi-month low, a low not seen since uh, since June of last year, so about a nine-month low. So if we break 0 spot 86.67, we could be looking heading back down towards the 86 area. And 86 hasn't been seen on, uh, on euro sterling since May of last year. And then, if we, of course, if you go south of 86, it's the likely are we probably go for, uh, even further, possibly even test 85. But if you do manage to push higher on the, 
push on higher from here. The first year to keep an eye out for the upside will be 0 spot 8800, seeing as it acted as resistance recently. And then if you go north of that, we could be looking at running into resistance at 0 spot 8889, the 2 day moving average. Notice how this in last month it acted as both support and resistance. And if you go n north of that, we could be looking at finding support, um, finding, finding resistance at the March high of 0 spot 8967. I'll look at doing the US the US dollar versus the Japanese yen uh, in, in just just now and then I look to uh, to wrap things up. So the dollar yen um, since November last year has been in a fairly obvious downward trend. Uh, so the market pushed low here. The lows of this sell off here took off the recent low. It pushed higher, failed to take off the recent highs, trading a higher high. Traded sideways for a bay, and then it was lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. So it's been a classic downward trend for the last number of months. But we are seeing a bit of a signs of recovery. The market started to push higher here. The market, bearing in mind, if, if you take a look at the lows that, that, it was, that it was at, the lows that, that it was at only a few, only recently, were not levels not seen since November 2016. And the push higher here. Um, has actually re has actually pushed as the market's pushing higher here, increasing positive momentum. So the so the MACD indic 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 confirms the push higher in the actual market itself. If you do push on, if you do hold north on the 50 moving average, which comes into play in around these levels of say in around 107.05, if you continue to push on higher from here, keep an eye out for the 108 level, psychological number, but also area of consolidation in uh, in, in recent months. And if you go north of 108, you could be looking heading back up towards. Uh, the kind of 109 or else the 109 spot 78 area but bearing in mind if you've had a fairly aggressive sell-off in recent months so the possibility this move higher here may not last and if you go south of the 50 day moving average again we could be looking at testing 106 and then the recent low of 104.63 and if you go south of that we could be looking heading back towards 104. Now, seeing as it, 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 there's been no other questions in relation to markets to look at, I just quickly want to point out on our trading platform, the week ahead, uh, the economic calendar can be found under Market Pulse, fourth option down at Market Calendar. You can see here, it gives you a breakdown of what economic indicators are expected to come out. It give you the forecast and give you the previous reading. Also under Market Pulse, you can find our insights, uh, which, which is here. So and there'll be a video of this recording on Market Insights within the next hour. Some of the trading updates that we do, the analysis updates that we do throughout the session get posted to Insights. Some of them get posted to the News and Analysis website, which I showed you at the top of the webinar. Some get posted to both. Also, this section here, Chart Forum, which is under Market Pulse. Second option, third option down, um, Chart Forum. We take a screenshot of a particular chart. I write a few hundred words about what's going on in the chart and uh, potential uh, prices that are of interest. Now, from all of us here at CMC Markets, I do want to thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good trading week and good luck.